Good afternoon, everyone. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to just to share a few moments with you. Uh, the video you just saw was, it wasn't fiction. It was actually, those are real grades I got in the class that I took my senior year. This class called Bridge Design. So I'm in civil engineering, and, and there was a, you know, a test and experience that I had that was actually very similar to an experience I had earlier on in my academic career. So during my sophomore or junior year, I came to this class known as Dynamics. Uh, if any of you have heard of Dynamics, but Dynamics is a class that mechanical engineers, civil engineers, structurals, and others take as a part of their curriculum. And so I got to this class and I had what you could say like a full cup of confidence. Because like many of you, I had gotten there and I had passed math classes before, I had passed the prereqs of statics and everything. And so when I got to this class, I knew that I was, okay, top 10% of my class. I knew that I graduated with a 4.0. And I knew that I could pretty much grasp concepts without like paying a whole lot of attention, like many of you. So I got to the class and I had mastered a lot of the nuances of being a good student. You know, like sitting at the front of the class, smiling at the professor, saying, good morning, professor, how are you doing today? Splendid day, isn't it? I go to him and sir, don't you know it's just a privilege to sit here and just glean from your intelligence. So I, I knew how to get all of those points that were on the syllabus, if you know what I'm talking about. So every, every week we would kind of go through and he would present stuff and I was pretty good. I was able to manage my way to grasp concepts without having to like take a whole lot of notes, without being able to, without having to study so hard. And so he gave quizzes every week and I had a pretty good grade on all my quizzes. And so I felt pretty good until the first test came. I remember the first exam, I came in and I saw everyone getting ready, saw a professor. Good morning, professor. Look, it's a splendid day. I want to tell you that this exam that we're about to take is an absolute honor. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity. And so he gave us the exam and I'm feeling good. He says, all right, when I tell you that it's time, you can flip over your exams and begin the test. And so he says, all right, we're gonna start now so you can flip it over. And so I'm feeling good, I flip it over and I, mm -mm. Like, was I in the right class? <laughs> like I, I recognized the professor, I recognized the person that usually sits next to me, but I didn't recognize anything on that paper. See, I had gotten to the exam and I had studied, but like, I didn't like study, study. Because I knew that I could actually wait to the last minute. I was kind of proud of that in, in high school. But nevertheless, here I am on the exam, not understanding what I'm taking. And so I begin to sweat, my confidence begin to drain. So I'm flipping, all right, I come back to that question. All right, I don't know that one either, I'm gonna come back to this one. Um, and then, as soon as you know how sometimes you can kind of make it look like you know what you're doing, you start grabbing a couple of equations that you saw on the board at different times and kind of put it together in some kind of order. So maybe the professor might think that, okay, you just made a little mistake. So I started doing that. I started doing that in the middle of the test. And I actually started doing it to where I started impressing myself. Like, oh, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good on this exam that I didn't study, study for. And so, so much so that when I got done with the exam, I actually had my full cup of confidence again. Walked up to the front of the class and said, look, that's the best gift you could ever give me, professor. Thank you so much for that honor. Walked out, and what you'll find is that sometimes after the exams, Students would gather to kind of compare, hey, what you doing number two? What you doing number one? Hey, how do you think you did? I kind of get up in the conversation, how did I do? Oh, you guys want to know how I did? I, I killed that exam. <laughs> That's what I did. I felt pretty good about myself. Until a week or two later, when we got our test back. So we come in, we get our test back. I gave all the nice words to the professor, splendid day. I'm so anxious to get this wonderful test grade back. He passes it out, and sometimes what they do before they, they allow you to see your grade is say, all right, let me tell you some of the, the general stats of the class. So I'm gonna tell you that the average uh, grade on this test was a 75%. I'm like, that's it? He said, well, okay, um, we had three students who actually managed to get a perfect 100% on this exam. So I'm like, okay, that would be me. I think Steven did pretty well. All right, I think Jennifer probably got a 100% too. 
And then he said, all right, well, you have a few students in the class that actually score pretty low, and I invite you to come talk to me after class, and we can maybe consider taking the course at a later semester. I'm like, sucks to be them. <laughs> so he passes it out. He passes out the exams, and I'm feeling all good, and then I flip mine over it. Mm -mm. I got a 44% of the exam. All of a sudden, my cup of confidence, you can imagine where it was at that point. And so I'm wondering, what's going on? After class, everyone's comparing scores, and I'm like, I can't see them today. I'm sorry, guys, I can't talk right now. I got to go. I wasn't able to compare because I was crushed by that 44%. I went to this place where I began to kind of think about, man, I thought I was called the engineer. I thought this was for me. But for some reason, I'm having this, this rough patch. Should I really drop the class? Should I change my major? What should I do? I went to the professor and said, hey, look, professor, look, I just want to tell you, look, I, I got a 44% on the exam. He said, sucks to be you. <laughs> I'm just playing. He didn't say that. They're not that mean. But I'm like, professor, I mean, did, did you really mean to write, like, the, the number four two times? <laughs> like, I, was, was one of them supposed to be something else? A nine, maybe? And he told me, look, I, I didn't give you that grade. You earned it. He said, look, you can sit in the front of the class, we can make small talk, talk and everything, and you can not pay attention, but if you do that, you might as well sit in the back. And so I realized at that moment that, look, I could either step up or I can step out. And that next level of success requires a next level of effort. See, at that point, I had not yet ended a relationship with one that many of you can attest, procrastination. You know, for some of you, it may be a new fling, some of you have like a summer romance with it. Maybe some of you are in a long-term committed relationship <laughs> with procrastination. I don't know. But there comes a point where you just have to kiss procrastination goodbye. Because we prided ourselves sometimes in high school for not taking notes, not paying attention, still doing good. But I don't know if people get jobs for that. And so I kind of changed my habits at the point and said, look, I'm not going to drop the class. And it became like clockwork. I began to stay late in those days when we had the class and just practice. Talk about practices, kind of go over the, the exam, possible exam questions, and say, okay, so let me see if I can do it in 15 minutes. All right, let me see if I can do it in 10 minutes. So much so that I was ready for that next exam. I didn't drop the class. And so when I came into the next exam, I was focused. The professor said, Good morning, Nehemiah. Splendid day, isn't it? I'm like, Doc, I don't have time for that. <laughs> that's, that's neither here nor there. I'm here to pass an exam. So I took the exam, and I'm, I'm focused, and, I, and I, felt, I felt pretty good after leaving that. It wasn't as arrogant as the first time. And so I, I took the exam, and I know I was much more prepared. And so when I got my score back, I didn't get a 100%, like in the video, but I did get a 99. And that's when I realized that sometimes perseverance is what one needs. And if you continue to do things the same way that you've always done it, maybe you're not making the adjustments necessary to move to the next level. And so at that moment, that's when I learned that it was important to stay with it. Because at the end of the day, failure happens. Failure happens to people. It's normal. It's okay when you have a failure that you, you have to regroup sometimes. Maybe it's an academic situation. Maybe it's a personal situation. But remember at those moments, you can just get yourself together and keep moving forward. Because failure isn't defeat until one stops trying. And so I just wanted to leave that with you all. You may experience a grade like that. You may experience a breakup. You may experience something in your family. But remember, you can keep moving forward. So the idea is that, not, that we will just have the next big thing. We can press on. But one day we'll create it. Thank you so much for this opportunity.